night, everyone. We are so glad to be here because we've come to praise the Lord and testify of his goodness. Yes. I am Sister Shepherd, and with me is Pastor Shepherd, and we are your lovely hosts for this evening. So it's our pleasure to welcome each one of you to this service. Oh, yes, Sister Shepherd. I am thrilled to be fellowshipping with so many of God's people. There is always something new to learn about God and to know that he has made a covenant to be our forever friend. Let me share a few reminders before we go any further. There are two links in the YouTube chat, the registration link and the prayer link. We would like to get to know that you are here, so click on the registration link. And we have prayer ministers standing by to pray with you and for you, no matter the situation. You don't have to share any details. Just click on the prayer link and rest that difficulty there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. More prayer, more power. We also want you to participate in all of our worship. So join in, with, uh, join in with the praise team from the Eggleston Seventh-day Adventist Church and give God the glory. Oh, yes. But before they lead us in the inspiration, let's have our opening prayer by our dear elder and brother, Brother Springer, as we invite God's presence among us. Let us pray. Almighty and most heavenly Father, we give you praise and honor for being the great and fantastic and marvelous God that you are. We are indeed thankful that we can be co-laborers with you in this great work of evangelism. May you bless the proceedings. May you bless the speaker. May you bless all those who are involved in the operations. And most importantly, we ask a special blessing on all those who will hear this message. May it have a positive and important impact on us all. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
singing sister shepherd I, I i wanted to just jump out of my seat but ah i, I gonna leave that i gonna leave that for next time uh please be please be reminded uh, that the program starts at 7 p.m nightly until the 23rd of this month the month of may please do not forget to join us every night and also invite a friend right now We'll have the health feature by Sister Burnett, mm -hmm. Sister Fabian, mm -hmm. and Sister Schillingford, oh. followed by special music from Sister Aline. Oh, praise be to God. Good night. My name is Dr. Alison Burnett, and I'm a pediatrician. I've worked for many years in several Caribbean countries. Over my career, I have seen children die from diphtheria, from measles, from pertussis or whooping cough. I've seen children paralyzed from polio. I've seen babies die from neonatal tetanus. We no longer see these things because of the effective immunization program we have in the Caribbean. Smallpox has been eliminated from the world because of an effective immunization program. So why are we so reluctant to accept the COVID-19 vaccine? Before vaccines are given to the public, they have to go through extensive testing to ensure that they are effective and they are safe. I'm sure each of us have a friend or a family member who is a healthcare worker. Each day that we go to work, we put our lives on the line for you. So please help us. Follow the COVID-19 protocol and take your vaccine. I thank you. Okay, my name is Silas Fabian. That is uh, Priscilla Privo, brother. I work as a cardiovascular technologist in San Diego, California. What is that? Um, a cardiovascular technologist is one who works with a cardiologist, um, invasive cardiologist, who um, we do we do complex procedures like stenting and uh, pacemakers and defibrillators. We work in a very intense, um, sometimes urgent uh, emergency situations, and sometimes we get very close to the patient. And in terms of uh, the pandemic we're going through, we have to be very careful so that we don't get the patient sick or the patient get us sick. And that's why, um, that's why I'm doing this video so that you guys will understand why I had, I thought it was very important for me to do the, um, take the vaccine. Um, a lot of people say, oh, don't take the vaccine because it's bad, it's what have you, what have you, a lot of uh, conspiracy theory. But to us, we, underst we understand that we work with scientists and, and we have a problem with a pandemic and we should be, we should be those who help to um, solve the problem. Um, I see people having a lot of arguments about it. Some of my um, colleagues at work um, talking about they don't want to do the, um, uh, take the vaccine. And some patient, some patient very conscious and saying, hey, if you're going to work on me, you should have, you should be vaccinated, vaccinated. And some of us are saying to the patient, not some of us, the policy is for the patient to do a procedure with us. They have to go to do a test first. And if they are positive, um, we cancel the cases. And sometimes it's very, very unfortunate because sometimes patients die because they, they couldn't do the procedure. So that's why I, I actually took the vaccine, so that I could help um, 
the world solve the problem because we're in a big, big problem. And I beg you, every one of you who's listening to me, to take the vaccine. It is not to replace what you're doing right now, your ginger con 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 concussions, your, 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 uh, all your garlic stuff you're doing. Do that. Everything you're doing is great. I mean, you're raising a good community, you do your vitamins D, you drink your grape juices and all kind of stuff like that. It's great. However, it is not to replace that. It is something that is very specific. The vaccine is specific to a certain virus. So if you have it, it is an additional um, protection to fight against it. So you will protect yourself and protect your community, your family, etc. And that's why I believe, my friends, you should take the vaccine. Thank you very much. Good evening, brethren. I'm Beverly Schillingford from the Nature Isle of Dominica. I reside in Orlando, Florida. But on the 20th of March last year, I got news that my 14-year-old granddaughter had suddenly died of brain aneurysm, and I wanted to be with the family so badly. The port on Grand Cayman was already closed, so I had to seek permission from the premier of the country. Permission granted, I traveled to Grand Cayman. I thought I was going straight home to be with my children, but I was put on 14-day quarantine. What do you do for 14 days on your own? Then I remembered my younger granddaughter was perplexed. How could her sister have died? They both went to bed together the night before, and when she woke up in the morning, her sister was dead. She couldn't understand what was going on, and she didn't understand what people were telling her happened. So I realized that I need to do something to help her and other children. So I started to do research on grief and children. At the end of the 14 days, I had about 60 pages of research paper for my next book dealing with grief and children. Out of quarantine, what do we do? We're home alone. Nobody goes anywhere. So my extended family, we went on Zoom. We did cooking competitions. We did painting. We discuss scripture and we did things to keep us together, keep our communication going. In August, churches on Graham Cayman were open, schools were open, business places were open, but the port still remained closed, although it's a tourist place, because the government decided that unless 90% of people of the 60 and up population were vaccinated, the port would remain closed. Well, I got my two vaccinations and I feel good. Reverend, let me tell you, our God is greater than COVID-19. Our God is greater than what is happening in the world. Please keep the protocols, get vaccinated, and wait on God. He will take care of business for us. Let him go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I try to win this war, I confess my hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could is you know what tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen so in all things be my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you
needed you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you Wasn't that a beautiful rendition, Pastor Shepherd? Yes, Sister Shepherd, that was a beautiful rendition, I must say that. Now it's time to give to the Lord. We now hand over to Elder David, followed by our theme song, I Am a Friend of God. Second Corinthians 9, 7, the King James Version reads, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Isn't it wonderful to know that God cares about how we feel? And it is also important to remember that he has asked us to share his messages with others. We may carry out this commission by pledging to support his work and send our gift to the East Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists via the bank details on your screen. For the benefit of our listening audience, however, the bank information is as follows. For Barbados, the bank is the Bank of Nova Scotia, Scotia Bank. The transit number is 40055. The account number is 00005006. I'll repeat those numbers. The transit number is 40055. The account number is 00005006. For our overseas viewers who wish to forward their gift to the Barbados account, please include the SWIFT code N O S C B B B B. I'll repeat that code, N-O-S-C-B-B-B-B. -B -B. For Dominica, the bank name is the National Bank of Dominica. The account number is 10006972. The SWIFT code is NCDMDMDM. That information once again. The account number is 10006972. The SWIFT code NCD. M D M D M. Thank you for your offerings and gifts. Do continue to enjoy the service. Oh, merciful Father, it is indeed a privilege this beautiful day to thank you for the gifts that you have provided for us. We want to thank you, dear Father, for the blessings that you've placed in our hands. And as we show our love towards you by giving back some of those gifts to you, we ask your Father that you will bless them. Your work is important. And we want to thank you now for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So, Sister Shepherd, who will be presenting the word of God to us tonight? Pastor Drew Mori. Okay, tell me a little more about him. 32 year old Pastor Drew Mori hails from the lovely island of Barbados. Wow. He gave his life into ministry at a young age in the capacity as a preacher for Pathfinder and Mission 2000 Beyond. Yes. He then pursued a Bachelor of Arts in Theology mm -hmm. at the University of the Southern Caribbean to be a full-time minister of the gospel. Praise God. As a result, this makes him a product of Christian education from primary to mm -hmm. tertiary. Oh. Pastor Marie is currently serving in the East Caribbean Conference as a district pastor in the Commonwealth of Dominica, for the past five years. Wow. His upbringing has been a great asset in providing a basis for his ministry. Yes. He continues to give God thanks for the opportunity to serve in his vineyard as he allows the Lord to use him to spread his gospel of salvation to the world. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight's sermon is entitled... More than fair warning. More than fair warning. So I invite you to just sit back and listen as Pastor Murray bless our hearts with the word of God. Welcome to another night of my forever friend. Oh, we've been having wonderful nights thus far for the week. And I pray that you would have been indeed truly blessed. Uh, we've been having different presenters and they've been presenting wonderful messages for us on how Jesus is our forever friend. And tonight is going to be no different. So I pray that you would have invited a friend or a family member so that they too can indeed be truly blessed. But before we get into tonight's message, I kindly ask that you'll just bow your heads with me as we go before the Lord in prayer at this time. Father in heaven, I ask that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we learn tonight about how you are our forever friend, may your Holy Spirit fill us. May you continue to cover us. Be with me as I speak to your people, dear Lord. May our hearts and lives be transformed so that we will be able to say, I will go because my forever friend is ever with me. So thank you for your mercy and your love and for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Our message for tonight. More than fear warning more than fear warning uh, in this world there are some well-kept secrets there are secret societies we have secret recipes secret identities even family secrets and the list goes on and on when a spouse wants to surprise their significant other they ask everyone else to keep it hush hush. When friends and family get together to plan a surprise party, they do everything they can to keep everything on the wraps because they don't want to, as we say, spoil the surprise. But then, brothers and sisters, my friends, there's just some news that we can't keep secret, no matter how good it is. You see, it, it, in a world where there is a lot of negativity, in a world where there is a lot of bad things circulating, like it's everybody's business, I am glad tonight that there is just some good news that Jesus decided that he could not keep for himself. I'm also grateful to Jesus that this is not just good news, but true and factual news. Oh, we're not dealing with fake news here tonight, brothers and sisters. You see, my friends, when you get information, it always helps with every situation. As they say, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And in this topsy-turvy, twisted, bent-out-of-sorts world that has been ravaged by sin, we're pain, we're confusion. Sadness and discomfort seems to be thriving on all sides. 
It always seems to beg the question, when will it ever end? Thankfully, tonight I am glad that even though in this world of sin that is going downhill, that Jesus has presented to us great news tonight. You see, my friends, this world the way it is cannot remain the way that it is. All of this has to come to an end at some point. And I'm glad that the world, word of God tells us that better days are coming. Yeah. Oh, my friends, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you didn't hear me. I said, better days are coming. Hallelujah. And the word of God tells us in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, about these better days. And it says, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, yes. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's right. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, that is great news. That is wonderful news. Imagine Christ himself has said that he has gone to prepare a place for you, for me. He returned to heaven to create a place for us to spend time with him. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful time that would be. But you see, my friends, it means that if Christ has gone to prepare a place for us, that it means also that we must be prepared for him to return to receive us as well. Amen. You see, as sinful human beings living in a sinful, degrading world, we need something to look forward to. And when we find that mark and we focus on it and we desire to reach it, then and only then, with the help of God, will we be truly be prepared to meet our maker. But how do I do that, Pastor Murray, you may ask? What do we look for? How will I know that he is coming back or if he plans to return again? What signs can show me that his coming is sure or that even if it is close, some people may even dare to say that he already came and that he's not coming back. Some even would say that he's taking some bit by bit and then leaving others behind. But what is the truth, Pastor Murray? How can I be ready? What signs do I have to look forward to? So if all of these questions floating around in the air... I want to let you know tonight that Jesus, he's not just your creator. He's not just your provider. He's not just your protector. He's not just your intercessor, but he is your forever friend. And because he is your forever friend, he has decided to give us some inside information. Oh, he's not keeping it for himself, my friends. Oh, no. Christ in his love and his mercy has made it absolutely sure that we are not left without the proper information that is needed to meet him when he returns. So what are these signs? Turn with me now in your Bibles to Matthew. Chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, and we'll be looking at verses 3 to 7. Whether you have your phones, your tablets, or even if you still have your pages, Matthew chapter 4, verses 24, sorry, verses 3 to 7. And as he sat upon the month, Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, oh, yes. and shall deceive many. Let us stop here for a moment. There are many persons that will come and that have come and have said that they are Christ. They even have followers that are claiming that these persons are indeed Christ. However, in verses 23 to 26, the Bible tells us something about these fakers. And what does it say, reader? Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. That's right. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So one of the first signs that we have is that there will be many people professing and claiming to be Christ, when in truth and in fact, they are not. Our next sign, as we go to verse 6 of the very same chapter in Matthew chapter 24, let's go back to verses 6 and 7. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's right. See that ye be not troubled, for all these signs must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So let's stop here. Let us stop here for a moment.
would consider the dark ages. Persons were hardly, if not even ever allowed to speak about their faith. And even today in certain places of the world, thank God we still have the opportunity to speak and to praise the name of Jesus. What do you say? We still have the opportunity to talk about my forever friend. But unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, there are places in the world where people don't have the opportunity to talk about their forever friend. Because they are told that this is not what we should be speaking about. This is discrimination. This is not what we should be presenting to the world. Let me believe what I want to believe. Many persons, false prophets and false preachers are rising and giving all types of gospels. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know that there is only one gospel. One good news. And that is the good news of Jesus Christ. What do you say? Oh, my friends. Verse 12 tells us, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You see, there is a time, and there's still coming a time, and even now, where persons are seeing mischief on every side, just prevailing. And they're telling themselves, if I, with my own Christian mannerisms, I'm not getting on and getting through like the rest of the world, then what sense does it mean for me to be good? If the bad are getting through and the good are staying back, then I should be bad as well. But Christ wants us to hold on, and that is why I love verse 13. Reader, just go through that again for us. Verse but, 13, please, and it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same oh, shall be yes. saved. My friends, it says, who he or she that endures to the end. Once you hold on to your forever friend, once you hold on to his love, once you hold on to his power, to his kindness, the word of God, it says to us that we shall endure to the end. You see, our forever friend has given us these signs to tell us that he has got everything covered. He already knows what's going to come. All we need to do, my friends, is to trust him. But that's not all. One more thing, that exciting thing that we should expect to come in this world. In verse 14 tells us, and it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness right. unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Amen. Oh, my friends, just like tonight, you are not here by chance. You see, this, this verse here is telling us that the time has now come for us to be preaching the word of God. You see, the enemy thought that he could use COVID to break us down. You see, the enemy thought that he could use the pandemic to close the churches. But thank God for social media. Thank God for technology. Thank God for his word. And thank God that he would never stop being our forever friend. There is nothing that can stop the good news of Jesus Christ from reaching you. Because even when the buildings are closed, the technology opens up. New avenues to reach you, to reach your family, to reach your friends, to reach someone that you've been yearning to come to Jesus. Oh, that is why God is our forever friend. Because he loves us and nothing ever catches him by surprise. The gospel that he has called us to, brothers and sisters, is good news. And it's not just good news, it's great news. This isn't fake news, my friends. This is factual news. And we give God thanks and praise that because he's our friend, that he is keeping us well informed. But Pastor Murray, how, how do I know for sure that God's word will come through? 
you may be asking. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 2, verse 45. Reader, let's see what it says here. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. To all of my friends listening, when Daniel interpreted this dream for Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't just interpret it, but he interpreted it accurately, and not just correctly, but accurately, because his friend Jesus was by his side. And then he ended off the text by saying this, he said, the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. It means, my friends, that when God says something, you can definitely bank on it because once he says it, it must and will come to pass. And it is because he is sure about it that he intends to return and save us from all of this chaos and madness. Christ wants to let you know as well, my friends, that his return will not be in secret. You know, my friends, there are some who believe that when Christ returns, he's going to come back quietly. Uh, maybe he'll knock on someone's door. And then he'll say, hey, my brother, my sister, shh, don't tell your wife anything. Don't tell your children anything. Come quickly, follow me. Follow me, let's go quickly. The ride is outside there. Just come with me and let's leave before anyone notices. But I want you to know that that is not how God works. Some believe that when Jesus comes back to take some of his people, that maybe someone will be driving. And then all of a sudden, the only thing that will be left back in the vehicle are clothes, and more than likely a well-damaged vehicle too, because there's no driver there in the first place. Some are afraid that maybe their husband or their wife, have mercy, will be next to them while they're asleep. And then when they turn over in the morning, there's nothing or no one there. Wow. Leaving a bewildered spouse to wonder what happened. But this, my friends, is not the case. You see, because Jesus is our forever friend, he wants us to know that every single person will have the opportunity to not only know of his return, but also see when he returns. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17 tells us of this promise. And it says, reader, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's right. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, now I want us to focus on verse 16. It says and it tells us that Christ will descend from heaven with a shout. A shout. It didn't say a whisper. It says he will descend from heaven with a shout, with a trump. It didn't say with a piccolo or a flute. Oh, it didn't say that he will descend from heaven with a recorder. You see, Jesus is not coming quietly, my friends. It is going to be so powerful that it's even going to raise the dead. Hallelujah. There's no way that his coming is going to be kept secret. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 tells us, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and it says, Every single eye will see him, and also they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth will wail because of him. So everyone will know that Christ is coming back. There won't be anyone that said, but I didn't know. Pastor Murray didn't tell me anything. However, I want us to take note 
that even though Christ's return is going to be very loud and so grand and a wondrous event for the entire world, he also says something that is very interesting about his return. Let's turn in our Bibles now to Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. And it says, reader, Behold, I come as a thief. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. You see, my friends, even though Christ's coming is an event that no one will be able to miss, Jesus says for some reason that he's still coming as a thief in the night. That is, that is some strange word in there. You see, uh, uh, to say that he is coming like a thief in the night, especially for Jesus, it might sound strange. Because a thief, they're not going to announce when they're coming. They're not going to pick up the phone and say, Pastor Murray, I'm coming to your home around Tuesday afternoon at 1 o'clock. So please leave the doors unlocked. Oh, no, they, they don't work like that. The minute they do that, you know that you're going to be on high alert. Oh, but the good thing about Jesus is that he wants us to be on high alert for every single day. So even though we may not know the hour, Christ wants us to live every single day as though it were our last to be prepared in every single moment. Because we don't know when we would rest our eyes and sleep before he comes. You see, my friends, God in his wisdom is placing some of his friends to sleep even now before he comes. And when you die, my friends, that's it. No decision can be made after that. So now is the time to make the decision to be prepared for Jesus. I'm not here to scare you. I'm just here to share you the truth of our forever friend. To let us know and to let you know that he loves you. He wants to save you. He said he's not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. Because even though we have a forever friend, we also have a forever enemy too. And he wants us to be lost. And that is why Jesus in his kindness is trying to protect me. He's trying to protect you. You see all the wonderful sin, things about signs and warnings is that they give us an idea about what is to come. And that is what I love about Jesus. He's so kind to us to let us know what is happening and what is coming so that we can be prepared. But you see, the thing about signs, my friends, is that if all we do is stare at them, then the signs lose their purpose. If you're walking into a room and you see a floor sign that says, wet floor, caution. The smart thing to do would to either walk carefully or look for another route around it. But if all you do is just stand and watch the sign, you're not going anywhere. If when you're driving and you see a sign that says, caution, slow down, road works ahead. If all we do is just stop and stare at the signs, then we would just be there with the gas running or in park. But that is why Jesus wants us to ensure that the signs take an effect on our lives. He doesn't just want us to look at the signs, my friends. You know, some of us, we have a tendency that when we see the signs happening in the news around us, when we go on our tablets or on our phones and we look at the signs, we just stand in awe. We cover our mouths, we shake our heads, and we throw our hands up in the air. But you see, Jesus has given us these signs because he wants us to be prepared because he wants us to be ready. He wants us to move forward with him. And that is why I'm so glad that he has done all that he can to warn us. 
I'm grateful to him for such a wonderful and great gospel. And one thing we can be assured of, one thing that is certain, when Jesus comes back, oh my friends, you don't have to worry about him coming back as a child. You don't have to worry about him coming back as a man that is bruised and battered as we see in some of these photos and in some of these pictures of Christ. No! Christ is coming back as a reigning and conquering Lord and Savior. What do you say? Matthew chapter 16 verse 27 tells us, reader, and it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father That's right. with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. And Matthew chapter 25 verse 31, it also tells us. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So you see, my friends, Christ is returning. He said in his word that he goes to prepare a place for us. He says, and if he goes to prepare a place for us, he will come again and receive us unto himself. He says, if this were the case, were not the case, I would have told you that I wasn't coming back. But because he has told us that, we can trust him. You've heard last night and the night before and the night before that about how good a friend he is to us. How great he has been. From the beginning even all up to now so you know that we can trust him there are too many things my friends telling us that the end is close there are too many signs around us telling us that Christ's return is imminent but the choice is ours the choice is yours I can't make that choice for you. Only you can make that decision for yourself. Christ is calling you, my friends, to look at the signs around you. To be able to know that when you see these things happening, to not despair, but to look up. Because from that is when your redemption draweth nigh. Trust in God. Because he is the forever friend that has given us more than fear warning. My friends, tonight, God is calling you at this very moment. As I would have said, it is not by chance that you're listening to this message. It is not by chance that you're sitting in front of your phone, in front of your tablet, in front of your television, in front of your laptop, to hear me and these other presenters speak to you all, no. God is calling you. The Savior is waiting. He's just waiting. There with his arms open wide. Christ has called every single one of us because he wants to save us. It is not his intention, my friends, to see any single one of us lost. His hope, his desire is that you make it to heaven with him. But he doesn't want you to be unprepared. None of us know when he is coming back again. But he's given us the signs. They've been happening for a very long time now. All we have to do is just take note and not take them for granted. So as the song is being sung and played, while you're listening, whether you're in home or even if you're in the church, and you're saying, Pastor, tonight, I'm grateful for the fair warning that Jesus has given me. 
and I want to accept his call. Why don't you come now and give your heart to Jesus? He's your forever friend. He's not just my forever friend. He's yours as well. Don't think about your past. Don't think about your feelings. Don't think about your shortcomings. Just think about his love for you. Just think about the fact that he's going to prepare a place for you. And he said that he wants you to be ready. But you have to make a decision. He's not going to force you. He's not going to pressure you. But he will encourage you. He will call you. And if you hear that call, please answer him. Because he is your forever friend. If you'll take one step, if you'll take one step towards the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. You'll find his arms open wide. Oh, just receive him tonight. He's given you fair warning. Please receive him and all of your darkness will end. Don't resist him. Just let him into your heart. In your heart time after time, he has warned us, my friends. Time after time, he has waited before. He's still waiting for you right now. Let's just sing the chorus one more time because there's someone else that's still desirous of coming. Time after time, Don't resist him, please. He has waited before, and now he is waiting again. Jesus is calling you. Your forever friend is calling you. Oh, he just wants to spend time with you. He wants to come He wants to come Oh, praise the Lord. My friends, your forever friend, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Just keep trusting in him. The warnings that he has given you, that he has given me, is for our own good. Please, let tonight be the night that we say yes to God. That we resist the enemy so that we can be prepared to meet our forever friend. Oh, what a joyful reunion that will be. While you are there, if there's still someone that wanted to come, but you haven't yet, while I'm praying, you're still free to come forward to the altar if you're in the church. If you're at home and you're still having trouble with that decision, remember that Jesus is still calling you. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. I said he's not going to force you. But he still wants you to be saved. Don't think about the drugs, no. Don't, don't think about all the party and don't think about all the things in the world. The signs are telling us that the end is near. Just come. And as I'm praying, if it is that you know that you want to give your heart to God, just come to him. And he will save you. 
Let us all bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you've not kept your word a secret from us. We thank you, dear God, that you have been able, dear Father, to keep us in the bountiful blessings of your word, dear Lord. And you've given us your word tonight, dear Father, and I thank you for using me. We thank you for the gift of your technology, dear Father. That through these mediums, you can be able to use them in a mighty way to show us the warnings that you have given us in this world. We thank you that since you are forever friend, you have given us more than fear warning to avoid destruction. And I pray, dear Father, that you would just touch our hearts. For those, dear God, that have not yet given their lives over to you, there is someone tonight, dear Father, that may be resisting. They may think they have time, dear God, but I pray that you will help them to remember that now is the accepted time of salvation. Please, dear Lord, help them to look around, dear Father. Open up their eyes like Elisha's servant, dear God. Show them that we do not have much time, dear Father. Because the enemy knows himself that he doesn't have much time either. And that is why he's working overtime. So please, dear God, help us to sense a friendship with you, dear Lord. And to draw closer to you because you will never let us go. Because you are our forever friend. For those, dear Father, that may have given their lives to you already, we give you thanks and praise, dear Father, and I pray that the friendship will continue to grow stronger and stronger day by day, dear Lord. But for those that have not yet done so, I pray that they'll make that decision tonight, even now, that they'll pick up that phone, they'll call a pastor, they'll call a friend, their Father, or even the number that they're seeing, their God. So that they can be able to make that decision for you. And that you'll seal that decision tonight, dear God. So that when Sabbath comes, dear Lord, and they're ready to go down into the watery grave of baptism, their decision would have already been marked, dear God, by you. Because they would have accepted the call and heeded the warnings that you have given us. So be with us tonight, your people, dear Father. May we continue to trust you, dear Lord, with all our hearts. May we not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, may we acknowledge you so that you can direct our paths. Bless us, dear Father. Continue to cover us. And most importantly, when all is said and done, may we be saved at last in your eternal kingdom, saved to sin no more, along with those whose hearts and lives we would have touched because we would have accepted your more than fair warning. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love, and thank you for hearing and answering our prayer in no other name but the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for his sake. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. We thank you so much for joining us tonight. I pray that you continue to have a wonderful night by God's grace. Join us again tomorrow night where we have wonderful messages by the grace of God. Learning more and more about how Jesus is our forever friend. And I pray that you will continue to share this link and this message with a family member and a friend so that they too can indeed be truly blessed. So may God continue to richly bless you as you have a wonderful time in Jesus. God bless and have a wonderful night. Pastor Shepherd, we have been specially blessed tonight. Oh, yes, I must say that was a powerful, Indeed. powerful Indeed. message. I just want to express thanks to Pastor Murray for, for delivering such an awesome message tonight. And, and yes, he, he let us know there's only two sides, God's side and the devil's side. So which side are you on? And especially when it comes to the end time message, the last days, we have to choose a side. I don't know about you, but, but I want you to be on God's side because I will be on that side as well. And, and my listeners, please be on God's side tonight. Well, tomorrow night, we will learn about 
his family and my family. Oh yes, I, you know, family is always a big thing with God. So we invite you to join us tomorrow, tomorrow night at this, the East Caribbean Conference YouTube channel as we fellowship together. So please remember, same place, same time, tomorrow night as we come together to worship God. Good night, everybody. Good God's night. blessings to you and see you tomorrow night. Amen. I have a friend, my forever friend, a friend who knows me best and still loves me. Even when I'm sad, moody, or just want to be alone, he's there. And guess what? He wants to be friends with you too. So join me for an evangelistic series on the East Caribbean Conference YouTube channel. My forever friend, I want to introduce you to my friend.